Hello, everybody. It's Tom Chenault. It's the Tom Chenault Show. And, Brooke, I am telling you, this show is already terrible. That's his cowbell. Before we were... <laughs> Before this show started, he had his Nerf gun, and he was shooting people into the ocean. And you need to know that Richard Brooke this isn't a is Nerf all, gun. Yes, he's all man at the contact mapping app. He says it doesn't work on my iPad. It's an iPhone app that he says doesn't work on his iPad. So I called him on the phone, and here's how he was talking to me. He had his iPhone up to his head, just like. This, and this is how he talks. Somebody told him that his iPad was a giant huh. phone at the Apple store, and he believed it, and he walked out, and this has been his telephone for, like, literally months because Kimmy doesn't have the guts to tell him he's an idiot. So, Richard, this is an iPad, and the iPhone is that smaller thing with the smaller screen that you talk into. So, make a long story short. It's going to be a long hour. I hope you're all ready for it. We've got Richard Brooke with us. <laughs> he is. I have no idea where he is. He's out on the range somewhere. And uh, I love the guy. I love the guy. I just showed him a book. He could not believe it. This is a hardbound book. And I am telling you, it is dusty. But Brooke gave this to me like 25 years ago. And it's Mach 2, Hair on Fire. And I have named literally my phone calls. I wore a shirt earlier called Hair on Fire. I stole this the day I read the book, and I've had it ever since. And I don't think I've ever officially apologized for basically branding myself around something that he invented. But he did. So Richard Brooke, what a buddy. Happy to see you. Thrilled to death. Everybody, you can comment. You can share. This is going to be a show that I right now, I promise you, I'm apologizing in advance for. So here we go. Hello, Richard Brooke. How you doing? <laughs> Unapologetically authentic. You sound senile. I'm good. So, good. So tell me what's going on. Where are you at right this minute? What part of the world? I am at my ranch in uh, central California in the foothills below Yosemite. Wow. And then you Yeah, I got a... my snake boots on. Wow. Really? That's pretty cool. And yeah. snake boots. Probably yeah. the biggest ambassador longest ambassador i mean long before any of the people that everybody's talking about now you've been doing this so long that it's unbelievable and i know your chicken story i know the oxy fresh story i know the whole story i know your friend that you lost steve that you love so much i mean you've been through heartache in this business, yet you still stay an amazing ambassador for the profession. Why is that? What do you do? Hang well, I can't go back to the chicken plant. They won't. Okay, go no, ahead. I'm here. All right. Go ahead. <clears throat> I can't go back to the chicken plant. I can't go back to the chicken plant. And I love this profession. I love the great things about this profession, I love the wealth building aspect, I love the community, I love the personal development aspect. Um, and, you know, I remain an, an ambassador because we need ambassadors, Tom. We need people like you and, and me and all of our friends that are ambassadors because, you know, there are dark forces out there that continue to disrespect our business model and make it tougher for all of us. I think about my daughter, Haley, who's Kimmy's daughter. Uh, she's 21 years old. I think about Steve Spaulding's son, AJ, who's 22 years old. You know, these are the closest thing I'm going to ever have to biological kids. I'm thinking about the day that they're going to want to build and what's the landscape going to look like. And so I'm an ambassador for them, for them to be able to have a a network marketing reputation and an identity and a skill set and the kind of companies that they could build their legacy income in. That's why. Wow. Well, we've got a congressman, a United States congressman from the great state of Texas on here listening, Alan Steelman. And, you know, having people like him be a proponent of this profession. And by the way, he's somehow directly related to Mark Cuban also. This is a guy, I mean, I look at the audience out there 
And I just say to you, we've got the voice to be able to keep it straight or we've got the ability to ignore it and let the criminals take over. And last night I posted something about, you know, income claims where this goofball was sending me all these text messages of somebody's paycheck that he'd been in the business four months and was making $85,000 a week. So $85,000 a week, if you just multiply that by four, you know how much guys supposedly make and per month in four months. And that's what people, that's the garbage that people are sending around making this profession look so bad. And it just makes me mad. And I'm telling you, the one guy that it makes madder than me, who is always mad at me for being on certain boards and things like that because I'm such a wimp, he says, is Richard Brooke. And it's so funny because he just calls me out. My con mentor told me to do it. And then when I go do it, he tells oh, yeah. me I'm an oh, idiot. Sure, and that's yeah. how it went. Right. So what do we do? How do we, what right. do we do? What do we do? Well... You know, I think the, the you and I are doing the two most important things that all of us need to do, Tom, as opposed to being, you know, on the pulpit telling everybody else what they should be doing. You and I and a lot of other people in this profession are doing the best thing that we can do, and that is we're building ethically yep. and responsibly, and we're doing it in a legacy company, a company that has real products and real customers. And that's the most important thing we can do. Now, sure, we could, you know, occasionally band together. But the trouble with banding together is, you know, you, you can't really keep everyone out. And so the borderline people or the totally sleazy people, they end up getting in whatever organization you create. And then, you know, they're kind of doing their thing from the inside and, I've seen that happen in every group, every association that any of us have ever tried to create. So, you know, what I do is um, I found that calling people out doesn't really do that much good. And probably the most important thing I can do is celebrate people that are doing it right and keep doing it right myself. Which is what Eric says, too. Eric says, Tom, you're crazy to go to the negative. Your show's next week's show is going to be like that. Next week's show is going to have Kevin Thompson, Kevin Grimes, Tony Canuli, three big scab pickers. They're going to be on here uh, talking about regulation on a very, on a lot of fronts. And, you know, that's a little bit going to the dark side. But 90% of the time, I agree with you. That's exactly what we need to do is take the high road, recognize good behavior like you do with your children, and don't get caught up in all this. But I can't let somebody tell me after four months that they're making 100000 185 grand a month. There is no way. And then the post right after that says no. he'd be yeah. – we, we have to call that out. You did that to that Romanio guy that time. Yeah, I, I'm – Go ahead. Yeah, you know what, Tom? I did that. I posted I posted his BS on my fan page, and, you know, he was in that stupid thing you put on your wrist that tells you your heartbeat or something, Wait you know, minute. something my is. toaster will do for me for free. <laughs> 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 and uh, so I called him out for all of his Ferraris and Lamb, you know, $200,000 a month and and then just last week, he posted on his Facebook page that because of his integrity, you know, he was resigning from that company. And, you know, it was all about integrity and it was all about integrity. And I almost copy and pasted everything he put there and blasted him again. But it won't do any good because... Yeah. Um, it, I mean, it, it, it actually makes me feel better. Cause I just don't like giving people a pass and I know you don't like giving people a pass and I just haven't seen it make much of a difference. Right. Um, but you know, maybe we should create a website called the MLM wall of shame and just post everybody, you know, but Ted's then of course that. we'll make mistakes. We'll call, <laughs> we'll call somebody out that maybe didn't deserve to be called out and, <laughs> that has a lawyer. So and then anyway. we're both washing dishes and I'm working at the chicken farm with you because right. we called out the wrong guy. <laughs> right, yeah, right. That's a terrible idea. And right, what he just right. said, I do not agree with at all. He was lying. I don't want any part of that story right there. So no. <laughs> Brooke, 
Yeah. So, yeah. And I'm going to come back, and after, you know, we're going to take a short break here in a bit, a few minutes and talk about my favorite. We've got some unpaid advertisers that I've got to get to. And what you need to know about this show is we're on regular radio uh, on the Genesis Communication Network. There's like 500 stations out there that this thing blasts out to with a guy named Ted Anderson who is kind enough to put me in the air. And then during those hard radio commercials, we just do fake commercials right here. And so it's pretty fun. So if you ever want a fake commercial, you get to come down here and have it, and it's going to be fantastic. But at the before we get to that, what are you doing, Bliss Business? Tell us what the heck you're up to, people. I, I what you're, you're training the industry. You're all over the world. You're training companies. I've never seen anything like it. And you're doing these little webinars that for 90 day jump starts, and you're just killing it, man. You're everywhere. Well, I've had this coaching and training and tools business for, can you hear me? Yes, of course. Uh, I'm, I think I'm dwelling on every word. I've Go had ahead. a training, coaching, and tools business, okay, for 25 years, but I never really did much with it until I sold my network marketing company a year and a half ago, and this is on building uh, in that company. I help her. Um but most of my time, 95% of my time is spent with clients, and I only work with legacy companies, companies that have real products, companies that have proven that if you build it, they'll pay you for the rest of your life. Nothing against startups. Every company was a startup at one point, but I only work with legacy companies. And, uh, you know, I do lots of things. I coach CEOs and presidents and top sales leaders, and I do online programs and and I have tools and I have books and <clears throat> and why do I do that? Because actually I do it because Kimmy and I do better in like separation of power. Like she is in charge of our network marketing business and I help her, but I just do what she tells me to do. And so she leads that business and I lead bliss business. And that makes for a like harmonious home life. There you have it. That's exactly right. And, you know, that's a very, I went to your house in Noosa and stayed a couple of days with you, which, by the way, was glorious. And I had a fantastic time, except that lady that was on the beach with us, the flower shop. What you don't know is I tried to send flowers through that lady because she owned that flower shop to you and Kimmy at that house that you had. And she never delivered them. I got, I got snoozled by about a 90-year-old woman on the beach that thought you were hitting on her. It was you know, unbelievable. Tom, she, she, became, she and her husband became great friends. We had dinner with them. I went great. golfing with her husband. I paid for Wonder, dinner. Wonderful couple. Um, yeah. Great. Yeah. Unbelievable. She's got my credit card. <laughs> All right. We're taking a break right now. We're going to come back right after this. Please stick around. All right, we're back. Hello, Adrian. Come on in here. This is oh, Adrian Chanel. That so, was fast. Ironically enough, we have a commercial for you, and it is amazing. I cannot believe I found a guy to do a commercial. He looks a lot like me, and I have known this kid literally all of his life. He is amazing. Hello, Adrian. Hello. Hi, Richard. Hello, Adrian. Hi. Richard's the one. I got to change this around. Here we go again. <laughs> Hello, Adrian. How are you? I'm talking. What's cooking? This contact mapping so app does not Adrian, work. Adrian, here's the, here's the um, problem, Adrian. I'm trying to like, and I got I have to do it like this. I have to turn my head sideways. <laughs> Fix that. <laughs> We're just trying. Your chiro this is sponsored by your chiropractor, Richard. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> so, Adrian, what's contact mapping? Tell these people, contactmapping.com. Go to the site. Talk about it a little bit, will you, Adrian? Cameron Core. Oh, my gosh. This is pretty fun. So, uh, this is good. We're in stereo now. How about yeah, that? that's crazy. So, uh, so, contact mapping is the distillation of the old school way of building relationships. And all we're trying to do is it should be done, which is to really get to know people, to really be interested in who they are, to really listen to what they're about, and to then be able to take them where 
want to go because you were truly interested to figure out if they're interested in what you're doing before you ever go and throw up all over them or throw product at them or do all the stupid things that we have had done to us and that we've probably all done in the past. And to then make sure that when we say we're going to follow up or we say we intend to follow up, that we actually do it. And the essence of doing that is just to make it really, really easy because we all intend to do those things. The, the, the reason that we don't do it has nothing to do with not knowing that it, we should or that it's a good idea. The reason we don't do it is because life happens and we don't have a tool that makes it easy for us. And the tools that we have out there are often as much work and overhead as they are benefit. And so we fall off the wagon. And so we're trying to fix that problem with contact mapping. Hey, Adrian. Yes, sir. Hey, Adrian. Instead of throwing up all over us about contact mapping, why don't you ask me some questions about it? <laughs> that, I walked right into that one. <laughs> you did. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, my gosh. I got it. We're, I am not coming out on the next commercial break. I will tell you that much right More now. More vodka. <laughs> More vodka. <laughs> So Richard, in, if you ask me some since, questions, since I you started training you. contact mapping in 1943, what is the number one <laughs> problem that you run into when trying to teach people how to effectively build relationships? Well, the number one problem is people talk instead of asking questions, and then even when they ask questions, they don't listen; they're not present. And then, you know, as Tom does such a brilliant job of demonstrating, I mean, wouldn't it be cool, Tom, if you and I could figure out how many people have we connected with in the last 30 or 40 years, and we can't remember who they are, we don't have their picture, we don't, I mean, I must have 2,000 people in my contacts, I don't have any idea who they are. I can't even tell who they are by their email address, you know. <clears throat> wealth, I believe that wealth comes from our network. There our net worth equals our net worth. Our net worth equals our network. But yeah. our network is only valuable to the degree that we actually know those people, that we have a relationship, that they enjoyed talking to us that they remember us and especially we remember them and their kids and their job and their challenges and their vacations and their dog's name. And <clears throat> boy, so you remember Adrian, you and I talked about that college project yep. early on. That's how passionate I am about, you know, what kids need to learn today is not a bunch of stuff. They need to learn out in the world who could they be connected with and who are those people's parents and who are their aunts and uncles and who are their brothers and sisters and who are their children and what do they all do for a living and where do they live and what are they passionate about? And to the degree that we have that body of knowledge, we have a wealth. It doesn't matter what we do for a living. If you're selling cars, selling homes, selling mortgages, you're selling flowers, your net worth equals your network. Okay, and so contact mapping is kaboom, the I'm best gonna, way to develop your network. I'm going to get kicked off a Genesis communication network. Okay, Adrian, you're out of here. I'll be back. <laughs> Good God. I am going to get fired. Okay, so we're back. <laughs> We've got Richard Brooke, and we'll be back with another discourse on uh, Richard Brooke Unplugged. This has been one heck of a radio show. The host is supposed to keep control of things. I have done a miserable job. You have one of these. <laughs> My God, I am tell I have interviewed Maria Baralomo. I've interviewed Donald Trump. I've interviewed, uh, let's say, Kramer. I'm trying to pe think of people that are perceived as crazy. I've never been on a radio show like this. This is awesome. Jordan Belfort, the wor the Wolf of Wall Street. All those people I've interviewed before, and now I'm interviewing Richard Brooke, and I'm sweating. I'm already in it. I feel like I'm in the chicken farm already. Because of, you cannot believe these <laughs> lamps. I am like at Boston Chicken. She, Mary Ann has like nine of these lamps all over me trying to make me look like a healthy, and it's not working so well. But at the end of the day, we've got Richard well, I'm Brooke. I'm sitting outside. I know. Nice it, breeze. 
Yeah, Why are I, you sitting outside like me? Because I don't look like you. I took actually took my glasses off because I <laughs> noticed the striking resemblance between you and I. And then I realized that anybody tuning into the show right now thinks that I'm your dad. That's what I thought when I was watching. So I took my glasses off <laughs> in a feeble attempt to look younger. So I can't see a thing. That's why I was looking at the wall over there trying to figure out when the break was over. And I'm signaling Marianne to, like, tell me because I took my glasses. I can't see anything. So understand that, everybody. So if I'm not commenting, it's Brooke's fault because of my vain attempt to try to look much younger because I look like his dad and I'm clear on that. So back to you, Richard Brooke, who are you are like a son to me. Unfortunately, you're my age. But at the end of the day, I want to <laughs> I want to know more about Bliss Business, how to drive people to you, how to show people that they can do business with you. So play like this is a little Richard Brook infomercial. Well, how about instead of that, I tell people what what I'm passionate about <clears throat> and maybe that will resonate with them and then Maybe if I can be of service, they'll find me and find what I'm talking about. So it's your show. Here's something that. that I spend a lot of time. All right, <laughs> that I spend a lot of time talking to my clients about, whether they're companies or their top sales leaders, is that you know people tell us whether they're prospects or they're all the people in our sales organization who aren't doing it, they're not recruiting, and if we're not recruiting. We're not honoring the network marketing model because without recruiting, network marketing is just old school direct sales. Recruiting is what defines network marketing. It is what separates us from, you know, what everybody did for 2000 years. So if people aren't recruiting, what I have come to learn and focus on that's made a big difference is it's not because they don't have time and it's not because they don't want to talk to their friends and it's not because they don't like network marketing and it's not because they don't have money and they don't like this. It's none of that. It is because we have not painted a picture, a believable picture, which can't be like hundred thousand dollar a month stuff, but we've not built a believable picture that the work is worth it. And the biggest mistake we make around that is we talk about making extra money. You know, $500 a month, $1,000 a month, $2,000 a month. And the problem with that is people can make extra money already. They can just do more of what they do now and make extra money. They can go to work at Walmart and make extra money. There's no value there. There's not enough value there to have them be a network marketer. But if you teach them what asset income is, what legacy income is, what kind of income you get when you build a team of four, five, six, seven hundred customers and distributors in a legacy company, money that you get paid for life, and you show them the value of that, people will do this. <clears throat> and the analogy I use is, you know, imagine I lined up everybody that was on the call and I said, okay, you know, we're at a live event somewhere and we go down to the hotel lobby and what I say is, Hey, let's everybody strip down naked and let's streak the hotel lobby. You know, there might be a couple of wacko people, crazy people who say, okay, great. But almost everybody would say no. Right. And why okay. would they say no? Because their values are, do I have to stop? Yeah, get it. we're going to get back on track here. So otherwise, so I'm going to just take, we're going to take a fast break. This is the, Adrian, come back out. This is the Genesis Communication <laughs> work this is the one and only richard brooke i hope you like the show it didn't cost you any money to listen so remember that so don't ask for a refund and we're coming back right after this thanks for listening and we're back with richard with brooke okay <laughs> Back in the hot seat. Yeah. <laughs> so, Marianne, put contact mapping on the bottom of the screen so, and the website so people have it. But we were talking about your college thing, and people are commenting and sidebarring me about what you were talking about. Because <laughs> every every week they hear about contact mapping, and so they they want a little bit of a, you know, Casey Eberhardt wants to run ads now in this little special spot, and everybody's saying they want to run ads. So we ought to start figuring out a way to let you guys do that because it's cool. So anyway, Brooke, talk about that a little bit. What is it? Well, it's it's a project I I proposed to AJ Spalding, my 
Steve Spalding's son. He's kind of the closest thing I have to a son. He's a senior at Iowa State. I proposed it to Haley, my daughter, who's a senior at Boulder. None of it. They didn't grab it. I've, I've talked to uh, Adrian about it. Adrian's probably the only one who the insight and the ability to do it. But here's the basic project is you, you create this for college kids. And it's a parallel project to them going to college, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, whatever they do, get their degree, blah, blah, blah. But you gamify like competitions, gamify, you have lots of awards, you have prestige, you have recognition for how many people the student starting off as a freshman can connect with and create data for in a genealogy looking thing like an app, which be like contact mapping. But so, you know, I got a roommate in college and instead of just drinking beer and going to the football game and whatever, what I'm incentivized to do if I'm part of this program is to ask him if Adrian's my roommate. So Adrian, tell me about your parents. What do they do for a living? What kind of business do they own? And you your uncle and your aunt. And dad. it's not an interrogation. <laughs> it's, an, it's an interview. And, and <clears throat> so the idea is that I not only know Adrian as a classmate, but I build kind of a Facebook profile of him. And then the algorithm actually goes out and builds, okay, who is Adrian connected to? Who are his relatives? There you go. And it starts to build out this organic network. And the objective at the end of four years of college <clears throat> is that I've got hundreds and hundreds of people, not that I've met at a beer pong party, but I actually have the network and I have been coached throughout the four years on how to reach out to that network. And, and like one of the assignments that I gave AJ was, hey, I'll set you up, AJ, with 30 different multimillionaires, self-made multimillionaires, and interview them for an hour. There you go. And learn how and why they started their business and how they became successful. And then, then when you graduate, <clears throat> you got all these ideas and you got all these stories and all these interviews, and you're connected to hundreds of business people now you can launch a career. That's an education. That's your network equals your net worth. There you go. And see, the reason I wanted him to throw that in there, you felt obsession there. Not only passion, you felt obsession about connection because every one of you are missing it. And if you use this contact mapping app, it's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to make you feel smart and it's supposed to be easy to work. And that's what it does. And it makes you feel good, right? Absolutely. Unbelievable, you guys. Okay, you're done. That was You did a hell of a job. <laughs> We're going to the guys that got this. We'll be back right after this. Shush. We don't need you, Adrian. We got this. And we're back. It's Tom Chenault, and it's the Tom Chenault Show. And, we're uh, back already? How do we get back already? It's just us old codgers, man. I'm telling you. Time's flying. You know, this hour is almost over. Ray Higdon coming in. He's commenting like crazy. Legends are commenting. I mean, I am looking at the people that are listening to this show, and it is making me want to cry. Bed Sturdivant, Ollie O'Connor, Bess McCart McCarty, Courtney Looper, Damian Callias, uh, Jeff Sokol, Casey Eberhardt, Denny Robinson. I mean, that just got me to like one page of the people listening to this show because, Richard, you can draw a crowd because you've done in your sleep what most people want to do in this profession. And we've got to get Denny Robinson on here. She is an icon. She's got her children doing it. You know, when I was with you and Haley and Kimmy in Australia and you guys so committed to her having this kind of life, isn't it great to be giving this business, this profession to your children? Don't you just love it? Yeah, Haley's, she's already built twice and I'm here. I got you. Keep Can you on. hear me? Yeah, perfectly. <clears throat> I said, uh, Haley's already built twice in a previous company and our current company. Uh, and she's got it. You know, I think the only thing that keeps her, she wants to see what else is out there in life for her. <clears throat> but 
what a great gift to be able to give your children, you know, like Denny's giving her children is the role model of, hey, this is how you be an entrepreneur. This is how you work from home. This is how you work from phone. And this is how you balance your life. And this is how you connect with people and encourage people and lead people and coach people. And, and this is how you build freedom. And, you know, you can do it at any stage of your life. Maybe you want to do a job for a while. Great. But what a, what a fantastic fallback position to have the entrepreneurial skills that you learn in network marketing and the personal development path that you learn. We're network marketing families. We are churning out the leaders of the future. We are churning out business people who are also environmentalists. They're also health advocates. They're fitness advocates. They're personal development advocates. They're relationship advocates. You know, as a pro professional successful network marketer, you don't get to like be in a tribe about, you know, I'm a liberal and you're a conservative, so you can't be on my team. You know, you just don't, you don't prosper in network marketing that way. You have to be a leader of all people. And, you know, our country today is deeply embedded in tribalism and it's horrible and it's dysfunctional and it's, it's on both sides. You know, I'm not picking a side. It's on both sides and it paralyzes our country and it drives us deeper and deeper and deeper into character fault. And, you know, <clears throat> there's not very many civilizations in the history of, war of the world have lasted over 500 years and they always die from the inside out. And network marketing just might provide the leadership of the future that can turn this country around because I have a vision for what's gonna turn this country around, somebody's gonna show up on the platform that is a powerfully charismatic leader of all people and can speak in a way that moves people like Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King, John F. Kennedy, you know, even Ronald Reagan <clears throat> kind of way. And, 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 and that person, probably a woman, hopefully a woman, is gonna move everybody back to the middle at least most people back to the middle and that's how we're going to save this country. Wow. And it's going to come from network marketing. You guys. Going to happen. And we've got to believe that that's going to happen. Richard Brooke is right on the money and we, we can take it back. I mean, you have no idea of the importance of what you're really doing here. And you have no idea of the power of what we've really got here. We've got to keep the integrity massively high, understanding the magnitude of what we've got to do. Because hope has disappeared. Hopelessness is like the norm. And buddy needs to do something. I am going to tell you, he hit the nail on the head. It might as well be us. And thank you, Richard Brooke. That was, that was straight as an arrow and right on the money. Why won't you join the board of the ANMP with me and start like really? <laughs> that was a perfect segue. You just did it. And you know, we've got, we need this, we need this charismatic, beautiful woman to help take over the world. And I happen to think you married one. So, I'll never forget her in that red dress and GoPro standing right in front of me. And I took the picture of her life that she still uses as the best picture she's ever taken, any, ever taken of her because she was that beautiful, that powerful from the stage of GoPro. She's got the game to do it with you. With her. You know, behind every good woman is a pretty good man. That's how that goes with you. And you two could really do it. But we need you on the board of the ANMP. <laughs> well, the answer to your question, the reason why I wouldn't, and I'm not saying I won't, but the reason why I wouldn't is, um, you know, I'm just very cautious about what I associate myself with. I spent many years involved in the Rep Selling Association, <clears throat> and, you know, I, I cannot be an advocate for the Direct Selling Association anymore. They do a lot of good in lobbying for independent contractor stuff, but then there isn't any other, there isn't any association that represents our profession. The ANMP might be a start. And what I acknowledge about the ANMP is that their heart's in the right place 
and the vision is in the right place, but the people that I see that are running it <clears throat> across the board, and there's some people that are in ANMP that I totally respect and admire, and there's some people that I don't. I think they're part of the problem, and they're like the fox in the hen house. And <clears throat> so if I got involved in the ANMP, all I could do with integrity, Tom, is call those people out and uh, make an effort to run them off and and I just, I'm just not sure that an association is the solution because you can't just keep running people off. You can't just keep calling people out because, you know, I'm not perfect. I'm, it's not my job to call out the world, you know. Um, and I've made mistakes. You know, I've called companies out before. I said, you know, don't join that company. That company's not going to make it. And then they end up being a actually a fantastic company. <clears throat> so... And I've done the same thing about leaders. So, you know, when we, when we get empowered to start throwing our opinion around, like we're right all the time, wow, that's a fast track to uh, destruction. Because, <clears throat> so, you know, doing something like the ANMP, really it's a platform for a small group of people deciding what's right and who's right. And I'm not sure that's what I want to spend my time doing. What right now, what I, I want to spend my time doing is teaching people. <clears throat> I, don't, I, I don't know. God, I no. can't speak for you. Well, I've got I know your heart's do. in the right place. Oh, you shut want, up. That's I know horrible. you You want to make a difference. Yeah, I do. And I don't like, you know, and I don't feel like I'm alone there. Maybe you, know, you and I, maybe you and Go ahead. Maybe That's you it. and I should start our own association and and just keep it just the two of us if it was just the two of us we could let eric in and ray higdon in and oh my god that would be a cluster and a half troy and plus Tom we're Calcone and jordan adler and yeah we're only a hundred years old and without it for about five sooner years. or later somebody would sneak in <clears throat> yeah no question i mean it's that. just like the you know three thousand people that are marching from uh Ecuador, you know, somewhere in there, somebody's going to sneak across the border. We don't want in here. That's exactly right. There's and a, then, there's a and everybody's box gonna... in sheep's clothing. Well, <laughs> yeah, how about this? So I'm having breakfast with him down at the ANMP, and I'm on the board, and he's at the breakfast table because he's got another meeting, and he's getting LASIK on his eyes, and some woman picked him up that wasn't his wife, and I was very suspicious till I found out it was Janina Villa. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, he goes, I'm not going in there. I can't go in there. And I'm so, I'm like, why? He goes, I just can't. So then I walk back in and everybody that, I mean, it's, he's just unbelievable. Brooke, you leave me weak. You have got to get on the board. So I'm not taking <clears throat> unreasonable requests coming your way right now. <clears throat> Officially of, invite you as a member I of the went, board. I went, I just, so there's clarity and acknowledge. I went to NMP last year <clears throat> and I'm glad I went. And... I'm glad I got to see some of the people who were speaking so I could have an opinion about they should never be speaking at an event like this. <clears throat> but there I go being arrogant and opinionated. Perfect. All about it. Okay, Let's we talk about go. something productive. We got two minutes. That's productive. That, that was what? productive. That was, that was extremely productive. That was more productive than you're ever going to know because you got yourself about three quarters pregnant there, which is what I needed. All I got to do now is just bring it home and make sure I can't even invite you. I'm just on the board. They have to actually, they probably won't even let you worry about it. But at the end of the day, I want you and yeah, I will do all I can to get you there. So you're, <clears throat> mut you're muttering whatever, you're, whoever you're talking to. So here's the deal. I love this guy. And so we're going to take, so we're going to do we're not going to take a break for a couple of minutes here and then we're going to take a break but between here and there what's the best website to find you how do they find you if if somebody what is it what, like what do we go to and don't be contactmapping.com <laughs> forward slash richard brook <laughs> no, no kidding <laughs> we do not have an affiliate program he is so lying through his teeth it's unbelievable and uh, he just is such a mess the, the easiest way to find me is richardbrook.com okay b-r-o-o-k-e richardbrook.com 
Yeah. I have a fan page on Facebook called Richard Blissbrook, a public figure. And I'm on LinkedIn and I'm on tweeting and I'm on uh, Insta Money and Venmo. Snap, snap chicks. <laughs> okay, good. Venmo, oh, I'm on Venmo. God. All right, this is such a ridiculous. I told you guys, if you guys saw me when I was laying in bed worrying about this show a little while ago and my eyes were wide open and I told you that you would learn nothing on this show and you kind of rolled your eyes going, oh, no, he's an icon. I knew it was going to be this, and I am so yeah. happy about that. Go ahead. What? Hey, you let me finish my streaking across the hotel lobby analogy. <laughs> I interrupted you. Heaven forbid you would never do that. I'm telling you, we have got to take a break, an official break. And I am going to raise the IQ of this entire show at a level you're never going to believe. And I'm going to prove up the coffee shop interview. I'm going to prove up contact mapping all in three minutes or less. And I'm going to finally introduce Richard to somebody that could get that app done. So here we go. I love you. Here we're coming. Stick around. We'll be right back. And we're back. And Rick. So anyway, make a long story short. Here we go. This is going to be pretty fun. Um, all right. Here we go. Say hi to Rick Manelius, everybody. Hi, Rick. How are you? How tall are you? I'm You're six Rick. foot five inches tall. Say hi to Richard Brooke. He's that rather wide man in the small picture screen there. Hey, Richard. <laughs> so I got him. I turned him on. And so this hey, is, where do we meet, Rick? Uh, Red front. Arguing. <laughs> <laughs> I was arguing with a guy. Mm -hmm. And Rick was sitting on the couch overhearing my conversation along with another guy on the couch that Rick didn't know. And the guy was like a hundred and I was talking about contact mapping to Duke Rumley and Rick said, and the guy goes, that's a bunch of hogwash. No one would ever embrace a concept like that. I've got a flip phone and that's all I need. And Rick looked up and said, you know, I actually think it's a pretty good idea. Mm -hmm. That space need has needed to be disrupted forever. And I go, who are you? And he goes, well, my name's Rick. I live in my, in, in town with my wife, Emily and my daughter, Evelyn. And, uh, I, I go, why do you live in Longmont? He goes, because I can. I can work anywhere. I go, why is that? And he goes, I work for a startup down in Denver. And I said, that is fascinating. I said, what do you do? And he says, I'm kind of in charge of a bunch of stuff. And he kind of gave me the look like you're an idiot, Tom. And then I said, well, cool. What's that on your jacket? And he goes, well, it's where I went to college. And I go, where'd you go to college? He goes, well, I went to MIT. And I go, really? He goes, yes, I have my PhD from there. I am a scientist and you're an idiot. No, and I did not I, say I, that. No, you didn't. And <laughs> he also got his undergraduate there. And this kid was on the track team there. And he is the best guy you'll ever want to meet. And not only did he fall in love with contact mapping, he heaved that other job out the window to help us with it. What do you think about that? Richard Brooke, put that in your pipe and smoke it. Is that true? I think all, yep, is that true. is that almost uh, true? Ninety nine percent true. What do you think about it, Rick? What do I think about it? About contact mapping. Well, I think it's a yeah, fantastic. Rick, it's over to you, Rick, on contact <laughs> mapping. <laughs> well, it's Rick and Richard, so sometimes you know. Okay, good. It's all good. Uh, no, I love the idea. Um, it's you know, there's obviously been the CRMs for companies and corporations, but as we've moved from you know working at GE and DuPont and all the big companies for 30 years um, you know the gig economy people are you know the entrepreneurial spirit is regrowing and the need to have your own database to keep your relationships yours is more important than ever and all the the tools out there are really serving that keep the data in the company where I'm trying to build my network and the people I meet for the next 30 years and so I think it's really really important that we have tools that allow us to sort of grow and build our network that way. Tell me why this thing resonated with you so much and who you'd like to shout out to because it made so much sense to you yeah. instantly. And it's so much little contact map on your phone. I mean, it's huge. Oh, we're supposed to be back on. Keep going. Okay. We don't care. Keep going. 
Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now the, the thing that the reason that was important to me was um, I grew up. I mean, my mother was essentially a contact mapper without the label. Uh, she was a secretary of a school. She had to interview all the parents and the kids that joined kindergarten. And over a 30 to 35 year career, 100 per class. I mean, she literally knew the details of every one of those families. And she didn't just know them one time. She kept up with them. And she she made a point to know what they cared about and what like their their sort of message of appreciation, like what made them happy. So whenever someone did something to her, she always made sure to you know thank them and you know give them a card or was it was it food or was it you know some sort of acknowledgement. And she developed such a strong like love from the community. It was amazing. I mean, when she retired, I mean, it was just the the amount of outpouring of support from everybody. And even though she's the secretary, people used to say, you know, your mom runs the school. Uh, because she had those relationships with everybody, all the students, all the teachers, uh, and so forth and so on. I just took it for granted. I just thought that that was the way the world was. And I, you know, I was an engineer and I was like, okay, that's, that's what mom does, but I do these things. And it wasn't until much later on that I was like, wait a minute, she actually taught me something very important, but because I was like a fish in water, I never really appreciated how important that was until I look back at it and say, wow, she really did something amazing. And that's one of the, the personal inspirations I have for contact mapping. And you are officially a scientist from MIT realizing the value of human interaction, right? Yeah. Um, and even having gone to MIT and, and people say, oh, no, it's not just the education you get. It's the relationships. And say, yeah, 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 I, I get that. Um, and then you leave. And then five, ten years later, you're like, wow, um, actually, those relationships, if I knew how valuable <laughs> those relationships would have been back then, I would have spent a considerable amount of time keeping up with them over the time. And I'm just starting to go back to meeting people. And it's been sometimes five, 10 years. And some of those relationships I can reclaim and some of them I can't. And that's the value of those relationships was critical. And I just didn't appreciate them as much. Um, so, Rick, I love you. I love you too, man. You're Thank an you. amazing human being. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Is that unbelievable, Brooke? Oh, by the way, we're back. Yeah, beautiful we're back. story. What a great <laughs> Well, all it did was prove up exactly what you were talking about on your app. I set it up that way because that's exactly what we need to be teaching in college. And here's a kid who is a scientist in nano something or another from MIT realizing exactly what you said that would prove up exactly what you talked about that we're proven up inside of contact mapping. And when I'm in the meetings with these kids, all they do is tell me I'm missing the big picture. It's bigger than that. That's all they ever say to me is, Tom, it's bigger than that. We're reconnecting the world, which is what we need to do in network marketing. And you were right on the money, Richard Brooke, and I love you. I'm done. You're supposed to talk now. Is it over? Yes. Go oh, ahead. I, you're supposed to ask me a question. <laughs> oh, I'm the host. I keep forgetting we're doing that. Unbelievable. Can so, I can I finish? Yeah, go ahead. Can finish, I finish my the streaking. Rant about Let's go. Are we talking about and philosophy? Yes. Go ahead, please. <clears throat> the never-ending rant. I can talk now, but we don't have another commercial. Hit it. All right. So. So what I was talking about earlier is I have come to get focused that the reason people don't do what we do, being prospects, being 90% of the people on our teams, is they just don't believe it's worth it. They don't believe the work is worth it. And so our job is to actually educate them, teach them, show them in a compelling, believable, exciting way that the work is worth it. And now, so how do we do that? How do we get enough face time with them that they'll listen to us? And that's where, you know, the whole coffee shop interview concept comes from is the more you give to other people in terms of being curious about them and listening to them and being present to them and looking for opportunities to serve them, the more levels they'll give you to educate them, to show them what you're doing. So, you know, the first time you talk to somebody, you might want to say, hey, this is what I'm doing. Well, you don't get to show them the whole picture usually because you haven't given people enough. So when they quit listening, what's that? Your, that's your cue for go back in, be curious, figure out a way to serve them, listen to them, be present to them, like put some deposits back in the bank. And then maybe they'll give you an opportunity to show them a higher level of value. 
And so here's my point about streaking the hotel lobby. If you line everybody up and you say, hey, we're going to streak the hotel lobby, who's in? You know, nobody's in, right? Except a couple crazy people. But if I say, hey, for a hundred bucks, streak the hotel lobby, well, you might get a couple of people. If I say a thousand bucks, you'll get a couple of those rebels who don't really care, you know, for a thousand bucks, who cares? You know, nobody will remember a year from now. They'll streak, you know, but still probably 90% of the people are saying, no, you know, that's against my morals. That's against my values. I would never, ever, ever do anything like that. It's, you know, that falls in the same category of, I don't like selling. I don't have time. I'll never do network marketing. I don't ever want to talk to my friends and relatives. But what if I make it 10 grand <clears throat> for 10,000? Will you streak the hotel lobby? Yep. I'm going to get a few more, right? What about a hundred thousand? At a hundred thousand, I'm going to get the prudes. I'm going to get the people who 10 minutes ago said never, ever, ever, ever. And for a million bucks, I'll get everyone. Yep. So if you, if you think about all the people on your team and why they're not doing what there is to do, it will support you to know that it's not for any of the reasons they give you, although it's very important that you honor those reasons. You just don't believe those reasons. And the only reason you believe and what you stay focused on is when I build enough value in this opportunity, when I show them, this is my quote, show them that the work is worth it. When you show them the work is worth it, People will do it. They'll throw all their other stuff away. I would never talk to my friends and relatives. I don't want to use people. I'm not going to sell. They'll throw all that out the window if you show them that it's worth it. And, the, and the best way to show people it's worth it is teach them how asset income really works. Okay, hang on one second because we're going we're gonna to cut this thing off right well, now. Thank you for pausing. listening. Don't work. Don't worry. Next week, it's going to be a great show with Kevin Thompson. Thanks for listening. We're back. Okay, Richard, talk about asset income. How's it going? I know that you're busy. Just keep talking. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you make $1,000 a month in right. network marketing and you do it in a company that has not proven it's going to pay you for 50 years, you do it with products that – People get off just as fast as you put them on, like the retention is zero. Um, if, you're, if, if, if your team is small such that you quit working, you're going to quit getting That's all earned income. That's all linear income. You might as well have a job. And as long as we continue to teach people, say things about our opportunity that has them interpret this is just about making money, it doesn't have a lot of value for them because they can make money a million different ways. So when you get really good at distinguishing, showing people the difference between earned income and asset income, it creates an enormous amount of value. So what is asset income? Asset income is simply when you build something big enough, strong enough, powerfully enough that you can step away short term or long term and get paid forever. Then what you built is no longer an income opportunity. What you built is an asset. So what I found is when you get your team to around four or 500 active people, which might take you two or three years of uh, you know, ambitious recruiting, the thing that happens after you get four or 500 people on your team is there's always some people in the four or 500, and it doesn't matter what level they're at, that are better than you. They have more ambition, they have more contacts, they have more influence, they have more credibility. They, they're they're, they're going to build a bigger business than you built, <laughs> but except that they're on your team. Right. So, and if you have products that have proven retention, proven value in the marketplace, then what you've built, you can step away from, maybe because you have to, you got to take care of sick parents, you're sick yourself, whatever. Or maybe you just choose to go sit on the beach then you get paid forever. You know, I was on a, a Zoom a couple of months ago, Tom, with eight leaders in one company. And these eight leaders had been leaders in that one company, every one of them, 
longer than I've been full-time in network marketing, which is 42 years. Wow. They've been leaders in their company. Some of them, their grandkids were earning money from businesses built by their grandparents in that company. And that's the true value of what we have to offer here is asset income. It's actually worth 200 times the monthly income. If you make $1,000 a month and you can walk away from it because of the products, the company and the team you built, that little distributorship is worth $200,000 as an asset. And now we're talking about wealth building. And, and you know, that's what people are looking for is, there, is how you get freedom financially is with wealth. You get freedom by having money coming in no matter what you do. Whether you have rental real estate or you have a big stock portfolio or you have an asset income from a network marketing organization with bulletproof products, with, with a big track record as a company and a team that's big enough so you've got some people that are better than you, which is your lock, that your team's going to get bigger. Asset income. Teach people how that works and they'll get busy. And that's what the four-year career is all about. And the four-year career. I have a favorite copy here, actually. I've got a hundred of them. I've got Kimmy's four-year career for women. I've got the other one for women. I've got all that jazz. But the one I love the most is the one with Tina Beer in it because Denise is also in there. And I am telling you, he has done such an unbelievable job with his brand. This book is a must have. And what's so cool is he's updated. it. He's got young people in here. He's got legacy leaders in here. He's got nothing but real people in here. And it was kind of funny that I, I went back through the list of the people on this list of the ones that were in the book that I was in. Every one of them are still active. Every one of them are still very relevant because he doesn't just take money to put people in this book. He gets people in this book that are the, I don't even, it, you didn't even charge. I didn't pay actually. I mean, it was, it was like he did this. Well, it's unbelievable. And well, yeah, I know I'm thinking about a networking times where you have to pay to be in it, but this thing was like that. There's Donna Johnson, who's a dear friend of yours. And uh, I actually said to her one time, I think like a year or two ago, that you were kind of getting old and over the hill. And she jumped on me like nothing I've ever seen before. Can you believe that? She defended you. Did you know that? that I didn't know that. But thank, thank you, Donna. She <laughs> is a treasure to this profession and she's a great example of somebody that's built asset income she built it in a legacy company with products that people buy every month for decades on end and she built a big enough team which in her case is like a million people yeah um so that she never has to worry again and so people like donna are my role models and there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them and you know there's and there's some of us that, um, you know, that's just, that's the thing. That's what we have to offer. And, I, you know, what I tell people is if you don't have asset income, if you're not building asset income, you're just building another sales job. That's and, right. you know, what, go sell mortgages or real estate or cars or something. Um, the only economic reason to do network marketing is asset income. And when it comes to that, you have to really understand what it is, and that will lead you to determine what company you pick and what products you pick, and it'll shape how you show the opportunity to prospects such that they start to believe the work is worth it. And when they believe the work is worth it, folks, they just do it. You know, some of you have, have I got a minute to say something else, Tom? I don't want to get caught up by the colloidal silver... <laughs> You like have no bacon or anything like yeah, this that. is there this is not a, like a milk a cart this is not a milk carton. It doesn't have an expiration date. Keep talking. <laughs> so here's an example of how I know that people already know how to do what it is we do. And 
that all of their reasons for not doing it are not true. They're just a smoke screen because they're scared. They don't want to get caught up in something. They don't want to get sold. They don't want to get recruited. They don't want to be out of control. They don't want to be taken advantage of. They don't want to be sold. They want to buy. But some of you have heard my not so secret secret formula. And the reason it is to build value in it because people like secrets. And the reason it's a secret formula is I tell everybody about it. It's on YouTube. But it works like this. What if your company changed its compensation plan, scrapped the 19 different ways to get paid, you know, 19 different levels, 19 different ways, scrap all that, and you only got paid one way, and that one way was you got paid $500 to ask one person a day to look at your opportunity, your I whole like opportunity, this. your products, your financial opportunity, your asset income, all of it. And 500 bucks a day, you can't ever miss a day. You can fill out some form and doing a religious exemption on whatever your day is. If you can prove that you actually follow that, you can take Saturday or Sunday off or Tuesday night or whenever your day is. But if you don't file that exemption, it's seven days a week. You got to invite one person. As long as you invite one person, you stay employed by your network marketing company and you get paid 500 bucks a day. That's $15,000 a month. Your income is capped at 15 grand. Nobody in your company makes more than 15 grand a month. There's no $100,000 a month earners or any of that stuff. Everybody either makes 15 grand or nothing. Because if you ever miss a day, you're terminated. No excuse plays. The computer cannot process your, computer, your excuse. If right. you don't turn in proof of an invite, we have like a little drone that follows you around and listens, films your invite. If you can't prove the invite, you don't get paid. But as long as you can prove that you invited, and here's the definition of an invite, you ask somebody to look and they say yes, no, or maybe. It's not like you send out a bunch of messages and hope something comes back. But as long as you do that, you get paid 500 bucks a day. And so I just want you to imagine that that was your comp plan and notice how you would perform as a network marketer under that comp plan. Yeah. Everybody would go to work. Everybody would talk to people. Yep. And there wouldn't be any of this, well, who do I talk to? Well, what do I say to them? Well, what do I do if they say no? That, all that stuff would be out the window. Every networker would take about 15 or 20 minutes a day to make sure they got their one invite They'd all make $15,000 a month, and we'd have the most amazing business model ever. Only one problem with it. That's illegal. Otherwise, we'd be doing it. <laughs> oh, jeez. But here's the thing. So let's say, you, let's say you invited one person a day to look at your opportunity, and you did that for, let's say, 90 days. And if you just think about getting paid 500 bucks for every invite, you know, you'd make $45,000 in 90 days. I'm pro I know – Everybody on this call would do it and could do it. You wouldn't need any more training. You wouldn't need to listen to anything, watch anything. You know, I'd be out of business. Eric could be out of business. Ray could be out of business. Todd Bell, we'd all be out of business. Could everybody just be out recruiting, right? Yeah. But, you know, if you talk to one person a day for 90 days, I'm going to make you this promise. You will have out-invited everybody in the history of your company except for maybe one out of five or 10,000. Yep. You would immediately rise to rarefied air, cream of the crop, and four or five years later, you'd be making 20, 30, 40, 50, $100,000 a month. The not-so-secret secret formula. And you can do it, everybody. So, <clears throat> thank you. He finally stopped talking. So here we can end this show, and next week it will be unbelievable. We have Kevin Thompson and Kevin Grimes, and it will be frightening. And Richard Brooke and I can go back into the wild, wild west. Uh, he can go back to the beach. Is your wife with you, by the way, Kimmy? Is she where you are? She is not. She she does she does not ranch well. Oh, she would have given you the hook She's long in ago. Oh, she's in Hawaii, that lucky, beautiful, unbelievable woman. I just put out, we want her on the show. We thought, when Marianne confirmed this thing, everybody, I need to apologize. We thought we had Kimmy, but we accidentally sent that thing to Richard, and he 
Yeah, we couldn't hurt his feelings. So trust me, everybody knows that was just a technical <laughs> error, and I need to apologize. But we will get her on here, so don't be sending any more hate mail. I'll have Denise help co-host. Uh, we still might have a commercial or two. We love you guys. We'll see you all next week. Thanks a million for watching. Richard Brooks, thanks a million for coming on. Love you, buddy.